Again, take two. I don't know what happened to the first one. Fuck it. Okay, uh, this first question is, why did I make that video on Islam? And why am I such a hater? Okay, uh, first of all, when you talk about facts and truth, it's not hate. Um, I believe everything I showed in regards to that is exactly what the liberals of the Western world are ignoring because it doesn't meet their, uh, their narrative. And uh, they're not seeing the big picture here. Uh, down the road, if that becomes an accepted thing here, uh, you're gonna see lots of liberals being thrown off buildings, I'm just saying. A Facebook message from uh, one of the MRA groups out there. They're having a, uh, a get together at the Washington, in Washington, DC, September 18th, 2017. I'll see if I can make it. It wouldn't be the first time I've gone to those events and I've actually been a guest speaker at a couple. But yeah, I mean, what's going on in, in uh, family court is insane. I find it absolutely reprehensible that you can go into the bank, whip out a gun, mow down six people, you know, go up for murder, and they will meticulously follow your rights in criminal court. But when you go into family court, you're guilty until proven innocent. They take a large portion of your, your income, probably make you make pussy payments for the rest of your life if you're married to long enough, and you're paying child support for kids that you have no uh, supervision or control over, but yet you can be sued if they do stupid shit. All right, now why did I make the video tribute to Robin Williams and my rant at the end was very disrespectful? I don't see that video as being um, disrespectful. Uh, what I do find disrespectful is the fact that uh, two of his ex-wives rode his ass into the dirt and uh, then they quietly have like a ceremony that nobody can come or say goodbye to them um, because they knew that they pretty much hold a lion's share of responsibility in his kicking of his air addiction. And the math portion at the end was basically showing the insurmountable pressures that were upon him even as his health was declining and he just said, hey, I'm done, I'm checking out. And you know what the red flags were, he set up the trust so his children would get all of his money if and when he should pass away, which is the correct answer in regards to that. I don't agree with him, uh, you know, t you know, committing suicide, but I understand it. And uh, if you haven't checked out that episode, you should. All right, here's another one here about a dude that lives in uh, Brooklyn. He's moving to Queens. He's, you know, he's talking about he hasn't met any women here. Um, you know, I, I don't want to bust, bust your bubble, buddy, but. Uh, <laughs> There really is any quality women left, okay? By the time they come out of college, they've been smoked and poked. They're tore up three ways to Sunday. You know, they failed the dick stacking test. And they basically just want to put a yoke on you and ride you into the ground, turn you into a slave. So uh, if you think you're gonna get a better deal in Queens, go ahead. I don't see it happening. Okay, what is up with my term hairless monkeys? We are not animals. We are animals, all right? We are hairless monkeys. We act atrocious to each other. We destroy our planet. We murder each other in droves, rape, enslave. In fact, at any given moment, half of the people in the government are kicking up better ways to either enslave you, tax you, or kill you. I mean, that's the way it is. So if that doesn't register as animalistic behavior uh, on your part, <laughs> you're an idiot. Uh, what are PSYOPs? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? PSYOPs means psychological operations. Now the fact that the army uses PSYOPs basically states it is a weapon. The army doesn't manipulate shit uh, for nothing. It's, it's their business is to enforce the last 300 meters of our foreign policy. But what I try to do here, gentlemen, at, the, at this channel, so we're trying to educate the guys out there that pretty much 90% of everything that you run into during the day is some form of psychological operation aimed against you. Anything from what you watch on TV to the commercials, everything right now is basically dumbing down men, taking away masculinity, feminizing you. I mean, just look at some of those Axe commercials. Uh, th those are crazy. Now, I do like the Old Spice ones. I mean, those are some funny commercials, but still, you know, this metrosexual bullshit, you're being turned into women, and then you realize, and then you just can't fathom why down the road you get divorced, 
because she doesn't want to be married to, you know, a mama's boy with too much sugar in his tank. Okay, somebody uh, caught that one thing I said about overpillowing. Uh, okay, well, overpillowing is simply this. Uh, when women get to a certain age, um, they collect pillows, tchotchkes, useless bullshit. And I actually tested this. Uh, I had one of my daughters, you know, count all of the pillows in my mother's house. All, you know, and <laughs> I mean, all the throw pillows, all the seat pillow, all the unnecessary pillows. And add 35 to it, and I and I, I bet her like five bucks. I'll be, I bet you five dollars. It's plus or minus three years from her age. And guess what? It was. So overpillowing is a phenomena, and it is fairly predictable. It's uh, very similar to cats or overcatting. It's like a tandem thing. Usually, women don't overcat and have pillows because cats do horrible things to pillows and you know the rest of your property. That's why I hate them. What is my opinion of the stupid youth of today? Oh my God, and check out my episode, Mangina. Hell, I pretty much go through it like line by line there. The young men of today are manipulated significantly in school uh, and usually not to their advantage. That's why so many girls are uh, doing well in school and graduating college. Uh, you know, because when a boy is a boy, he's a little rambunctious, they give him pills. Back when I was in grade school, I, I went, to, went out for recess. I had to run laps or sprint to the uh, home plate of, of the baseball diamond, which is just over a quarter mile away twice, and run the stupid right at you. So yeah, the whole system as it is now for the schools is, is poor. And the youth of today, for some reason, they don't ask why. You know, they just accept pe what people say at face value when they can be blatantly lied to. Okay, and there's no reason for that today because everyone has a smartphone and you can Google, for God's sake. If you don't Google anything that you have any doubts about and you accept it at face value, it's called laziness and you deserve what you get, you dumb fuckers. Anyone can teach a shit out of a book, right? I mean, just any monkey can read out of a book, but a good teacher, a wise teacher, can teach you the whys. You need to find the why in life and you will go far. Again, I mentioned that, that the system is one-sided, basically for women. Uh, in almost every aspect of uh, of life, uh, except for the uh, triple D jobs, uh, which is a nice bra size if you have a uh, you know a thin waist. But I mean you know dangerous, dirty, and discomfort jobs that women just don't like to do, and then they bitch about not making as much money as men because they don't take the risk nor do they get the reward. You know what the hell? Somebody's got to do that shitty work. Uh, no, no pun. Well, actually, pun intended. You know, you're a plumber. And you're digging around in shit. That's why you get paid. You know, 60, 70 bucks an hour. Okay. You want me to elaborate on the on the Walt on the Walt Disney syndrome? I think I talked about in the last one. But there's a new dynamic that somebody brought to my attention, which really explains a lot of the crazy shit that's going on with the uh, you know women of the Western world. Uh, everything that you know Disney puts out is like princess this. You're you're. Prince will find you, don't settle. You know, he'll re come to your rescue, knight in shining armor. And then you have the feminists right behind them saying, I am woman, hear me roar. Whatever you do, I can do better. I mean, is it any reason why these women today don't know what the fuck they're doing? They, they don't know if they're sinking or swimming. It's insane. Okay, I had one guy ask me, what is the 753311 rule? and the 7, 13, 21, and 24. Okay, I have a friend of mine, uh, he basically runs networks for law firms and I had access to LexisNexis a couple times. I used it, you know, in some of my uh, cases against my now ex-wife in court. But, you know, just for shits and giggles, you know, I number lined, I think it was like 1,600 divorces and they all clustered around these numbers, 7, 13, 21, and 24. And I call those the years of review. All right, your first review is at seven years, second review is at 13, third is 21, fourth is 24. If you make it past 24, odds are you're gonna ride that bag of bones in the dirt. So I'm just, I mean, that's the only upside on this. And the 753311, uh, I put that together. It's a little anecdotal, but I noticed that like when a woman gets divorced, she gets married like 26, she gets divorced like at 33, 
she'll probably either marry or find another guy because she's still semi young, but it only really lasts about seven years uh, because they, they've already got rid of one guy, good dude and they're just gonna do it again when I get to the first review. Um, or they're not gonna get married and then it's just gonna fall apart. And then her looks and her sexual market value is coming down. So the next one is only gonna really be in it for five years. And then the next couple will hang around for like three and then it gets really bad and she'll have like a string of ones and then it goes to nothing by cats. I think last time I checked stock of uh, PetSmart was $53 a share. You might wanna buy some. Okay, now I had some people get upset over that uh, that homo video I did. Listen, I don't care if you're gay. I don't give a shit. But guess what? Bi is gay. If you mess with the same sex, I don't care what you call it, it's gay. You can say you're part-time gay, you know, you're only Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, you can only be, you know, you can say you're gay from like, you know, nine to noon in the morning, uh, what have you. But at the end of the day, you're gay. I'm sorry. Okay, if you don't like it, don't care. This guy asked me why in several of my videos I make comments that the Western world needs to go away. Well, it does. Um, you basically have a society which is vilifying one of the sexes, there's only two, which basically contributes a lion's share of the tax income, uh, provides a, most of the defense, uh, you know, keeps everything humming along and, and running because they do the, th the three dirty jobs, uh, dirty, discomfort, and uh, dangerous. Women don't want to do that shit. So, uh, you know, if you're going to stab those guys in the back, then maybe you really, as a civilization, doesn't need to exist anymore. Um, you know, I, I, have, I have kids, you know, and uh, I feel for them because the world they're going to inherit is shit. You know, and there's really not much I can do about it. I'm giving some people some warning, but I... It's too little too late, and it ain't gonna make it much of a difference. Okay, why do I think if a woman makes more than her man, that the man is expendable? Okay, well, if you haven't caught on to the fact that men are expendable by now, you are an ID10T, that's an idiot. Okay, now, women instinctively look for the better deal. They don't have loyalty. I'm sure that some will say, yeah, it's a lie, pop, yeah, whatever. I've got hundreds and hundreds of examples of guys like broke his back and then gets divorced, loses his job, gets divorced, you know, gets sick, can't work, gets divorced. I mean, they just, they just kick him when he's down and, you know, there's no better, worse, richer, poor. I mean, that, you know, fuck you, I'm out of here. The same thing happened to me. I mean, I got, I got dinged up pretty bad in Iraq and it, it took a couple years to recover. And you know, when I, when I finally did pull out of the, the, out of the fog, I mean, it was a brain injury for God's sake. And uh, it's not like you can, you know, lift weights and regenerate an arm or a muscle. I mean, it's your goddamn brain. It's an intangible, it's hard to change. And you know, hey, you know, I got swapped out for, uh, you know, uh, I guess she wanted a hub in the, you know, Richard salad. Okay, now I made that one, this one comment and I got a couple, I got like four or five questions worded differently, but I'm gonna tell you, this is, why never go to the ground? Now, if you are in a fight and you go to the ground, you are immobile. All right, now in the rules of warfare, since I've studied it for so long, that if you're given the chance between armor and mobility, you should take mobility, okay? Uh, I don't care how good you are at jujitsu, you're just a dude, you're basically, a giant walking water balloon with a solid structure in the middle. And if you are on the ground, you know, no matter if that guy's good or not, you know, you're fighting him and it takes more than, I don't know, three seconds. If he has any buddies with him, you're dead. You're gonna get stomped out of existence. Don't go to the ground. Keep your mobility, okay? And then I had some other guys ask me, you know, like, uh, you know, while I was on, I mentioned that, they want to know, you know, what you could do to basically get ready for self-defense. And my ultimate answer is this, get a goddamn gun, all right? It's easy to train on it, it's a lazy man's weapon. Uh, it works pretty much all the time. If you should even wound the guy, he takes a fight right out of him. Get a goddamn gun, all right? Now, if you don't want to do that, you actually want to train, 
and uh, you don't have a lot of time and you wanna you know, get up to an operational level, you probably wanna go with some of the harder martial arts because the hard martial arts, you can become proficient and deadly a lot faster, but then you plateau out. And what I'm saying like a hard martial art is like boxing. Uh, some guys are, you, know, you can get great at boxing in six months, but uh, you know, there comes a point where you just don't progress any farther. Uh, it's even, you know, like world champions and like ranked one, you know, the top tank ranked guys in boxing, they're, they're almost always evenly matched. Okay, it's, it's really not big of a, there's really not a big gap between them, except one guy was lucky and one guy wasn't, I guess. Uh, another one is uh, wrestling. First of all, you know, I took wrestling in high school I wrestled two years, I was on the JV squad, wasn't that good at it, but it has saved my life on the battlefield at least one time and in you know, real world scuffles uh, many, many times. Uh, if you know how to wrestle, you know how to sprawl to keep people from grabbing your legs, you know how to sit down on your weight, hip toss a guy, uh, you know, break headlocks, you know, turn, turn into your opponent without exposing your neck. Um, and it's very easy to learn and, and it lasts the rest of your life. And you know, if you take boxing and, and wrestle and you do it and you become fairly good at it, you're an all around good fighter. Okay, if you wanna like finish the package, you know, take Muay Thai kickboxing and then wrestle uh, because you know, four is better than two. If you have hands and feet against a guy who just has his hands, well, I feel sorry for you when you're, uh, you're junk is kicked up in your esophagus. I got a poem today, it's a real short one. I wrote this one years ago when I was in a very bad place. I remember uh, my divorce was just finalized. I think it was the beginning of 2008. I'm walking out the front of the courthouse with my attorney and I am laughing my goddamn head off because I just could not believe the craziness that went on inside that building. And I also could not believe why there wasn't dead bodies stocked, stacked up in front of that courthouse eight feet high. And it's so goddamn corrupt. So, I was, you know, I was in a bad place and I wrote this poem at the time. And it goes, it's very short and sweet. <clears throat> and it says, uh, I have no wife nor kin to heed my cause. And therefore I'm bound by no man's laws. And with no man's laws to hold me fast, you better watch yourself, cause I'll kill your ass. Anyway, it's just a poem, you can take it for whatever it's worth. It's another episode here from the Lair. Have a good evening.